It's another Saturday and you're welcome to another episode of Today's Woman with me, Nana Ikuya Mensa Rampa, not your regular host, but it promises to be exciting today with a conversation we'll be having with one woman who has been making a difference in the world of communication. She is a great communication person as well as a public relations expert. I'll be introducing her to you later after this. You're welcome back. Let's now go for the segment where we have women making a difference in their society. It's Woman on the Move. Sculpture is an art passed down from ancient times. Ancient cultures carved visages out of stone and wood and even clay. In Ghana, sculptures of late former presidents Dr. Kwame Nkrumah and John Evans at Mills and military officer the late Major Maxwell Mahama were erected after their death as a way of keeping their memories. These works seek to honor individuals who left a legacy and preserved the country's customs, traditions and history for generational reference. But there have been instances where some sculptors have gotten it wrong. In May, a statue of the Asantehine, or tomb for Saito II, was erected at the redeveloped Kejitia Market in Kumasi in the Ashanti region, but was met with mixed reactions by its semblance. The statue really doesn't uh, resemble our king. Um, looking at um, several uh, statues we've seen in the country, uh, for instance, Nkoma's own, you, when you see it, you could really see that this is Nkoma. Uh, from the point of view, the pictures of Wutun Ford that I've seen in town and the statue I'm seeing now, there is no much difference in it. Earlier in January, a sculpture of Shatawale surfaced, exaggerating the artist's features. It became one of mockery as people felt the work was not a true representation. Memories, they say, last forever, but there are some that are destined to fade. Deborah Texan here is using sculpture to help keep the memories of loved ones. Today, I am here to find out how she's able to do this. Deborah Texan has been sculpting for six months. She tells me her love for the arts and her creative nature is what endeared her to the arts. I had a passion of art, but I didn't really pay attention to it. And I came across um, a video of this art, looked at it very well, and I casted my mind back to some years ago when I used to play with my grandpa's hands, how his veins were. And looking at this, I was like, okay, if I had the opportunity to have a cast of my grandpa, I would still have a little bit of him. She says she's able to recreate baby bumps, family casts, and even pets. On our visit, we met two friends, Daniel, a businessman, and Abbas, a footballer based in Italy. Their visit was to request Deborah to make a cast of their hand as a way of relishing their time together and their friendship. Now that he is not also with me there, every time I see it, at least it will give me some, some memory. It's like, let me say, brotherhood. yeah, brotherhood. Um, actually, it's like I'm having a little bit of himself with me. Yeah, it reminds me of his um, real bond, as in real, he's a real brother. Deborah says she would want to pass the job on to her children as a legacy. It's like I'm recreating another human. That's the feeling. You understand? I enjoy it, so I'm going to do it for life. I can probably pass it on when I'm no more. Maybe my kids can take over. So, while people are telling fond memories of their loved ones with pictures, Deborah is recreating these memories with images. Here, 
I have my own lips posed in a kiss right here with me. And this is something I can always leave with a loved one as a memory. I have a woman here I've been looking up to uh, for how many years now? I'll tell you the number of years, but I've been working with her behind the scenes and today I am privileged and excited to be here one-on-one -on -one with her, to interact with her. I know her to be God-fearing and uh, she's also a good communication and a PR expert. She's, she knows all about it when it comes to communication and PR. She is in the person of Miss Esther Amba Nomaba Koba. Well, first of all, I, I, I was asking myself what the Amba Nomaba is, if I have the pronunciation right. Could you just break it down for yeah, me? Yeah, Amba Nomaba is now my middle name. It used to be my main name. Okay. That's how I was named by my father. And, uh, but when I went to class one, everybody had an English name. I didn't have one. So I picked Esther. And of course, over time, acquired it legally. Mm. Uh, Amba is Saturday born in Fanti okay. and Numaba is fifth born. I'm the last of five children. But I'm happy to have the Esther because as far as I'm concerned, Esther is the only name in the Bible, a book in the Bible that in which God is not mentioned. But then we see the power it's just of Esther. God. <laughs> yes, it's, we see the power of God at work through Esther. And it's my prayer every day that as I bear this name, the power and love of God will be shown through, through, through me. Let, let's get into your childhood days. Who is Esther Koba? Tell us. Oh, I'm a simple girl, you know, uh, from Komenda in the central region. I was born in Second D. I started school in Second D, then went to live in Salt Pond with my mother and my father. We went back to Sekendi where I attended um, Boundary Road Methodist and then Ekwasi Methodist and did that until class six thereabout. And then my mother moved me to Komenda. We moved to Komenda. So I lived in Komenda with my mother and then went on to Mofratru. But growing up, I grew up in a, a very entrepreneurial setting because my mother um, chose to stay at home after her education to take care of us. And she did everything from sewing, crocheting, uh, baking, selling in Mankasim Market. So I would go with her and sell there and bake with her. It means, it means, it means it's, it's, it's safe to say that you picked your entrepreneurial ability from yes. your mother. Yes. I guess it was in Victoria Cobbers Entrepreneurial School. So your mom was your role model, if I could... Definitely, definitely, definitely. And she was a stickler for tidiness and cleanliness. And I just enjoyed that about her. And she, she had an amazing voice. And she would sing from about 3 a.m. when she would wake up and start working. And that's how I learned all the Methodist Christian, the Methodist hymns in, in Fanti. And she, she, she didn't just sing them, she spoke them. It was almost like she was speaking the words to herself and to people around her. And uh, she also uh, started us off with um, worship, you know, okay. going to church, praying with us and all that, and making us understand meaningfully who God is and what joy means says Jesus, others, and yourself, you know, J-O-Y. And uh, letting us know that your, your grounding is in Christ, your Savior. So we, we grew up in a boat where we knew Jesus was residing. Okay, so it means it started from childhood and you've grown with it from, yes. till now. And yes. it's really telling in your life. I can't go. <laughs> I can't go. Okay, so whilst you raise the issue of entrepreneurship, as it started from your childhood days, let's look at your dream as a child. Mm. Did you even anticipate or dream that Stratcom 
Africa would be where it is now. How did this dream really start? My dream growing up was to get into a profession that would touch lives. That I knew. The reason is that we used to travel between Komenda and Sakendi, and Sakendi a lot. And I used to see all the little villages and towns and ask my mother, what would it take for them to come together? What would it take for livelihoods to improve? Because at least living in Sakendi, I was exposed to a little bit more than what I saw. And then also I'm somebody that really likes to see people living in harmony. Mm. I like understanding. And so I wanted to be in a profession that would facilitate development and that en enhancement of individual livelihood and also promote mutual understanding. And that's exactly what you're doing with And that's with. what I found myself doing. I mean, after I studied and I was fortunate to like subjects that helped me to learn about human nature, subjects like in literature, because when you read literature, you are largely analyzing human behaviors, human nature. And then I studied religions mm. and beliefs, you know, and then I studied history, both ancient and modern, which helped me to understand why people do the things they do and all that. And then I was privileged to be accepted into the School of Communication after my first degree and after doing a national service at um, Presec. Okay. And uh, I, I went into the School of Communication and it was like a eureka moment. <laughs> this is what I wanted to do. But I just wanted to dig deeper and see how communication could be a real tool for development, for communities, for countries, and for businesses, mm. for individuals and families. And that is where I found my, my place. Okay, and you've been there from that time till I now. I but I, I, I would I want to find out, you know, when we young people, you have a dream and your parents say, no, you won't be a lawyer, I want you to be a doctor, I want you to be uh, a pilot or something. Did you have any challenges climbing the career ladder? Did your parents want you to be something else that you didn't want to do? This is what happened. My parents wanted me to go to Mofratro and Wesley Girls High School. And I did go to both. For them. Did you do it for them or you did it for yourself? I, my mother really wanted me to go to Mofredro, and mm. I did. Okay. And she sent me on a Friday and died the following Monday. Wow. And so in my heart, I really wanted to be what she really wanted me to be. Mm. But we hadn't arrived at that. I knew that she wanted me to be organized. She wanted me to be excellent, very hardworking, mm. very domesticated, because I was cooking with her from an early age, cleaning the house with her and all that. So in terms of what I could be in future, I made my choice. Mm. My big brother, Dr. Koba, who was at Gimpa some time ago, he helped me, he advised me, but in terms of what profession I would follow, I, I sort of... You chose it. I thought I would be a lawyer and then stumbled on uh, communication. Mm -hmm. And um, so I really didn't have that challenge of somebody saying you have to be a doctor or you have to be an engineer or... I found myself with my mother dead and I didn't live with my father for so long. So I, I chose, I guess, when your <laughs> mother is dead, God becomes your mother. Okay. And I remember that at age 11, um, when a child evangelist came to Mofratro, I gave my life to Christ. I mean, my mother had given me the grounding, but 
I realized that there was a vacuum and I was missing my mother so much and he came and he preached about Christ and I rediscovered Christ all over again and I've never really looked back. Of course, sometimes I've slipped but he has picked me up again. I'm excited that um, I followed that dream for instance and in Wesley Girls we started what we called Evangels which eventually became joined Noise of Joy and became Joyful Way Singers oh, okay. and now is Joyful Way Incorporated. Oh. That's one of the things that, you know. So it means you sing. I sing. Well, you, you, so you're going to sing for me? <laughs> we not on the <laughs> show. <laughs> All right, so if you just tuned in, you're watching today's woman and I'm privileged to be having a conversation with Miss Esther Ambanumaba Koba. And it's been quite exciting for the little period that we've been talking. I have lots of questions to ask her today, but I'm trying to massage and then join and, and get uh, some answers from her. Um, now, I want us to talk about women and um, potential. Looking at the Ghanaian woman in general, would you say that women are limiting their potential? Looking at the current uh, uh, nature of the women we have, in the country? Kenyan women are phenomenal. I mean, the kinds of work that Ghanaian women do, I mean, and we don't have all the technology that have been evolved in other places. I mean, when you, some have the technology, but most don't. Look at a washing machine, a dryer, a blender, a vacuum cleaner, we do all that. We are these machines all rolled up in one, including taking care of children, taking care of uh, men who have a pair of hands that sometimes they <laughs> like for us to work with for them. They so the, to the children, the children and most women say that their, their husbands are their firstborn. So Ghanaian women are phenomenal. We have a lot of potential, but I guess sometimes uh, pro uh, logistics, um, policies, and others limit us. But I think that the main limiting factor is sometimes our own selves. And what I keep telling women is that we have the opportunity to liberate our minds so that we can liberate the people around us. Also, one of the things that I keep saying is that every woman has to take responsibility for the environment in which they find themselves so that they shine. No environment is limiting. You just have to look at what can I do with this space that I have and develop ourselves. But I feel that, unfortunately, sometimes we women um, spend a lot of time and it's I guess it's because of where we find ourselves going over and over the challenges we have um, we without turning them into opportunities sometimes they're very uh, constraining factors but some of the constraining factors also emerge from some of us uh, you have a six-month-old baby you're sitting here now, what you find sometimes is we're using childbirth as an excuse. Sometimes we don't, we may not organize ourselves pro properly. But we go to the office and we use project management principles in the office. And women, God created us as project managers. We can multitask in ways that very few men can do and I, I work with men as well and I can tell that women can do so many things and pay better attention to details but sometimes we, we unfortunately use some of the things that are peculiar to us be it pregnancy or childbirth and all that to limit ourselves because we may not organize ourselves well enough or 
tend to use some of those things as excuses. It means we can. It means that we can push ourselves more than we are pushing now. If in some cases, yes. In some cases, sometimes too, we are limited, but we are constrained by the unfortunate circumstances that we find ourselves in, and that is where I think we should reach out to each other, share and support each other and build each other up. That's where we should have our sister-sister mm -hmm. sister chats. You, you just raised uh, an issue of men in the workplace. Would you say that some men, I wouldn't say all men, are intimidated by powerful women when it comes to the, the uh, workplace? It would appear so. I mean, but can you blame them if you're, you've grown up in an environment where you feel you've been made to feel that men are it and then you find yourself in a context where you see that women are really it you get confused me, so i wouldn't say question. that they I are intimidated that. they are confused utterly confused totally unprepared and trained i'm actually trying to make it personal <laughs> but i know you're trying to <laughs> dodge that but let me say is auntie esther intimidating the men where she finds herself i think they have to tell me are they intimidated I, I don't know they have to tell me i work and when people tell me that you work like a man i tell i ask them which of the men <laughs> so you want them to draw the line between i work like me i i studied good principles of work from my mother i read the bible and i told that whatever your hands find to do, do it well. By your works, they will know your God. And so I work with those principles. I serve a God of excellence, and therefore I should be excellent. I work to a heavenly uh, standard, and therefore it sh my standards should not just, I mean, you know, mediocrity is sometimes protected. And I, I wasn't brought up like that. And the God I serve should not be served in that manner. And so if you're intimidated by that, go read the Bible and sort, sort yourself out. Auntie Esther, for you, she would direct you to go into the Bible. <laughs> but you know, people have one or one principles of leadership, three, whatever. Forget about take Everything is in the Bible. So it's uh, you can read it as a business book. Mm -hmm. And if you read, if you're doing that and you encounter the Holy Spirit, it's you and him. But go to the Bible and you will find principles of life. Look at values that different companies have: integrity, teamwork. All those things go and look in the Bible they are there so what is the problem well once you're talking about workplace uh, I would want to look at workplace and uh, life how do you juggle the two how do you balance work and life family work how does it work for what is that by letting my family be a part of my work by sharing with them what I'm doing my children, when they were growing up, knew exactly what my work was. If I had to go and I remember I used to do the Oil and Gas Africa conferences every year. And it was an exciting time for them because I would take them with me to the conference center to listen to me give my speech, my paper because I would organize it and very often I delivered a speech as well. And I would bring them in and I'd introduce them to some of the big, big people that came. So, so you're working with any of them? Uh, the yes, 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 okay. yes. They, they, they love what I do and uh, they, they appreciate what I do and I really do appreciate them. They are wonderful boys mm -hmm. that I have. I thank God for their lives. But when I come to work, I deliver what has to be delivered at work. I know sometimes I work too much, and that is something that I am working on. And people talk about work-life balance. It's about prioritizing. And so it's not, it's not a 50-50 yeah. affair from, from where you're going? It, it, it changes. Okay. Sometimes there's 60-40, 80-20, 
depending on what the situation is. But I also make sure that I cut out things that don't benefit me. Uh, we tend to do many things sometimes uh, some of them are inconsequential, so I have to think through what I have to do and determine does it benefit me, does it benefit society, does it glorify my God, does it benefit my family, and then I decide where to put my priorities. So for those of you who do not know, uh, Auntie Esther has also been consulting for brands outside Ghana. Yes, she is that big. I want to find out from her, though, uh, what was the first time she achieved uh, that? I did work for an organization in Ghana, and they were so impressed. I didn't know that I was sitting there one day when I got a call from outside Ghana and said, you were recommended by this organization. It's because you did work for them and they were really impressed. And so they asked me to do work for them and I did it and they were impressed. How and was this? Uh, this was in early 2000, 2002, 2003, 2004. And I'm sure it has been a door since. Well, by God's grace, as the Bible says, by your work. They shall know you. So if I tell people, when you're working, never think that you're working for an organization. You're working with an organization. You get value and you give value. And so whatever your hands find to do, do them, do it very, very, very well. And your work will speak for itself. Mm. What really is the philosophy of Strico in terms of management? The philosophy that I have come to Stratcom Africa with and I've been evolving, I've been growing, is what you find in, I think, Psalm 78, where it says that David led the people of Israel with integrity of heart and skill of hand. You have to have a heart for people. You have to be accountable. You have to be true to who, what you are doing and what you, what, who you are. If a client brings you work, you do it to the best of your ability. And therefore, and that is honesty, that is integrity of art. But then you have to have the technical know-how to do the work well. So in Stratcom Africa, when you come, one of the things that I always tell the staff is, you're special. Out of all the people in this world, you were identified. If we had you, we wouldn't hire you. The other thing is that we're a bunch of imperfect people trying to create perfection. Finally, if your work is good, if you work to the glory of God, you render HR irrelevant. And that is integrity of heart and skill of hand. And we are evolving over time. We're not perfect. We continue to grow. And, uh, but it's worked for us. We are 25 years wow. this year. And we've been celebrating in our own way from May 13th this year until we end May 13th, 2020. We're 25 years by God's grace and all that we, we have accomplished, he alone, God, has done it for us. I want to talk about uh, the private sector, where you find yourself. How has your business been so far in terms of the private sector? How would you paint the picture to government, if I should put it that way? It's been challenging. Um, I guess government after government um, say, they want the private sector to be the engine of growth. I think a lot of work needs to be done. Um, we're trying. And um, I don't know that there is a deliberate effort to grow businesses in Ghana so we can also be investors in other countries. It's good enough that we are constantly 
trying to develop new businesses, we're promoting entrepreneurship, startups and all that, that is all good. But then, from where I sit, I would like to see a little bit more of a deliberate effort to protect the private sector. It's a competitive environment Definitely. and everybody, I'm not saying that we should be spoon fed, mm -hmm. but different countries develop policies for ensuring that their private sector grows and actually um, is able to get out of their respective countries into other countries. So the investors that come here are from private sector organizations in their countries and they grew in their countries. So can we also grow here? And I think that in Ghana we also need to uh, watch carefully how after the change of different governments, different organizations experience certain setbacks. It is something that as a country we need to confront in all honesty and stop it. It looks like it happens every time. It is, it is something we need to stop, especially the fact that we consider this country a largely Christian country, that is not what the Bible teaches us. And that is something that we need to be honest about. We have to confront and stop it so that the private sector can grow, so that private sector organizations are not doing four years forward, four years back, and also are not seeking to hide because they feel that you talk to entrepreneurs and some of them say, I'm doing, I'm being quiet because if they know, what's all that? I mean, whichever government is in power, that has to stop. Let's confront this. We're not children. We're grown up. Ghana is over 60 years old. Let's stop that and grow our private sector meaningfully in every way. Now, if my memory serves me right, I remember Stratcom Africa won some awards for the Ghana Club 100. Could you give us more? I'm sure there's been more awards. Oh, by God's grace, we've won local and international awards. In fact, tomorrow or so, we're being recognized in the U.S. for work that we oh, have done. Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, we glorify God for that and uh, by His grace, I myself have won a number of awards. We've we've won, uh, we've done CIMG. We've done IPR Ghana. We've done International Public Relations Association, PR News. I mean, Lots. Club One Hundred. We Lots. I guess were the first communications company to be named wow. on uh, Ghana Club One Hundred, and we continued for three years to uh, be named among the top. And more, more to come, I'm sure. More to come, more to come by God's grace. We will continue to pursue excellence. And especially in this, our 25th year, our theme is communications excellence for Africa's prosperity. Okay. And um, we are, because of this experience we've had growing from, you know, a study table into a shipping container into where we are now by God's grace. We also want to use that experience in addition to our communication expertise to help other, to work with other Ghanaian enterprises to grow. And we focus on Ghanaian enterprises in general, but we look at SMEs, we have a, an offering called Great Expectations because okay. you start small and you have great expectations. We have programs for startups and all that and um, we, we're just delighted to use communication as a tool for facilitating business growth in Ghana. Mm. And yes, that we've been talking about work, 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 work. Is there relaxation in Esther Cover's books at all? There is. Really? I'm created in the image of God. Remember he rested after the sixth day. I relax with my grandchildren oh. and I also relax in my garden. Okay. I do a lot of gardening. I, I mean, I can stay in my garden till 2 a.m. 
It's very oh. relaxing. There, you know, I have flowers that bloom only at night, and by morning they are dead. So I have to stay in there and see them bloom. And uh, I also relax by singing. So you're singing for me? Not today. today. Not today. <laughs> Come to Praise Jam. I'll sing for you. Okay, so she's brought Praise Jam up again. I want you to tell us about Praise Jam. When is it happening? What should we expect from Praise Jam? Praise Jam has been going on for the past 13 years. And this year is our 25th anniversary edition. Mm -hmm. What you should expect from Praise Jam is a room, a hall, packed with over 2,000 people wow. waving white handkerchiefs, most of them wearing white, celebrating the grace of God and praying towards more grace in the following year. This year, it's at uh, the Pentecost International Worship Center at Kokumlimle, opposite Challenge Bookshop in the ATTC compound. And we have coming Daughters of Glorious Jesus. It's Daughters of Glorious Jesus at, at, at 30, oh, okay. Stratcom Africa at 25. And then we so have... It's like a double situation. Yes, we have, yes, we have Eugene Zuta. Okay. We have Becky Bonney. And Reverend Ife Chimiri, I think, from oh. Action Chapel. Okay. And we have some surprises. Every year we have surprise performance. Can you tell me? I wouldn't tell anyone. No, I won't tell you. You're on air. So, and it's free. Okay, I was just about asking. What it's been this. free. Oh, okay. All you need to do is to come with a heart full of gratitude or a heart full of need to be filled. And you don't have to be a Christian to come. No, no, no. Just come to enjoy music, come to celebrate come to find answers to why these Christians are always praying and jumping and why yes why are they what is it what is the secret behind that so you don't need to be a Christian just come and you know what you're sitting at home feeling lonely or you're ill or just come miracles have happened I mean, at praise jam already yes <laughs> 7th December 2019, 5 p.m. sharp. I have to be a part of it this you time. Have I haven't be been there. to any of your shows before. That's a, that's, that's, that's a sin. <laughs> I know that. You will repent. So I'm, I'm, I'm confessing. And you've never I'm been to the Ghana Garden and Flower no, Show. You've not been to a shared discussion. No, I haven't. Then I'm going I'm to let trouble. you. You're in trouble. What I will let you do, since you speak so well, is I'll Thank take you. you to a school to read to my children. I have another program called Read It, Write It, Say It Better. And so, so you will be on that program. I'm, I'm, honored. I'm really honored. Thank you very much. <laughs> and I'm sure you summed it up for the Praise Jam. If you are planning of doing anything at all this Christmas or this December, it's a place for you to be. It's been quite exciting. I was hoping we wouldn't finish now, but time wouldn't permit us to continue. I'm sure we'll still have more conversations after this. I'm really excited and it's been a privilege talking to you, Auntie yes. Esther. It's been wonderful <laughs> talking to you. You drew so much out of me. You energized me. Thank you. God bless you and God bless anyone who's been listening. I pray that what we have shared here will benefit you. And uh, if it benefits you, it benefits me as Thank well. Thank you so much. Thank for you. Coming bless you. Today's bless. Well, I'm sure I promised you excitement and I'm sure you've had a full of the excitement that I am having here in the studio. But that's it for today, Soman. And it's been quite uh, engaging, in-depth discussion with uh, Auntie Esther Amba Numaba Koba. I got the name right there. And she is a communications expert, PR expert, what have you. Everything that you need about communication, she would give it to you. It's been quite exciting here. And also, I want to say thank you to some people. Uh, Mervyn Pick Ambassador Hotel, thank you so much to GTP. Thank you to Yas and the one to Wamba. Thank you so much. We enjoyed your drinks. Well, that's it for today's episode of Today's Woman. You would want to join us again next week for more. Enjoy your day and have a blessed weekend.